All right, let's answer this question once and for all. Is it still worth it to start a cybersecurity job in 2024? I know many of you who watch my channel are still beginners in cybersecurity and debating whether or not it's worth it to start a career. And in today's video, I'll be as honest with you as possible, giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly of working in cybersecurity, but also starting off with the point that everything is about perspective. For example, someone could see needing to upskill and getting new certs every year as a bad thing, but you can also see it as constantly learning, trying new things, and basically never getting bored at work, which is a great thing. It can also be very hard to get that first job in cybersecurity, but once you're in, you're in, and that also means really great starting salaries. In which, in my case, in my first job in cybersecurity, I was making six figures out of college, and that was much higher than I ever expected to make without any previous experience. So we'll get into all of this in this video, but first off, I want to start off with these stats from the Bureau of Labor Statistics on the fastest growing occupations or jobs between now and 2032. So information security analyst actually comes up as number five on this list of the top top 20 fastest growing jobs in the US within the next 10 years or so. It also has one of the highest median salaries sitting at $112,000 per year based on numbers from 2022. So this is definitely going to be a little bit higher this year, but I do think that paints a relatively positive picture for the outcomes and the career outlook for cybersecurity analysts, especially for those of you who are starting out today. But the problem is the fact that many cybersecurity roles nowadays require three, five, seven, 10 years of experience, even for those early career and mid-level roles. This is something that I think is going to really need some upgrading in the next five to 10 years because there are companies looking for talent, but they can't find the candidates with the right credentials and the education and the experience level that they're looking for to fill their roles. And the reason why is because there's just this very, very high bar for entry level cybersecurity professionals to jump through to even get that first job in cybersecurity. This is also because employers just aren't investing in the right training resources, in the right development resources for entry level cybersecurity professionals to be able to grow and thrive in an organization. And because of this, they set super high bars, even for their entry level roles, where I see many, many cybersecurity analyst roles that are entry level or early career, and they already asked for three to five, five to seven years of experience. And I think cybersecurity has one of the worst cases of the chicken and the egg situation where you need a job to get experience, but you need experience to get a job. But on a positive note, I do believe that companies are slowly realizing this because there isn't enough talent to go around in the cybersecurity space that are more mid-level or senior. And if every company is hiring for a mid-level security engineer, there's just no chance for anyone who's just starting out to be able to ever get in. And eventually the talent pool is going to get smaller and smaller and employers are going to eventually have to start hiring and actually investing in the training, the resources that are needed to grow cybersecurity talent. And I am seeing this in some of the job listings on different job sites that don't require years of experience or no longer asking for a bachelor's degree. So I do believe that change is coming, but it's just coming very slowly. And by the way, if you're currently someone who is looking for a cybersecurity bootcamp, the one that I recommend is the Springboard Cybersecurity Bootcamp. My my favorite thing about them is the fact that they have a get your job or get your money back guarantee if you qualify. They have all the details for qualifications on their website linked in my description. And you can also get $1,000 off the bootcamp using my code with Sandra. They have a holistic cybersecurity curriculum, technical projects, as well as help prepare you for the CompTIA Security Plus certification, which is again, the certification that I recommend to all cybersecurity beginners. And you can find out more about them using the link in my description, which goes into my next point about needing a degree or needing a bootcamp or needing a certification. And the thing about these credentials is the fact that even if you get them, it doesn't necessarily equate to or guarantee a job. And I guess that is the case for many jobs in tech, even if you have qualifications, whether it be through technical experience or, or a degree or a bootcamp, especially in the current job market, I know it's pretty rough, especially in tech, but basically having these credentials, even having your Security Plus or your ISC2 CC certification doesn't necessarily mean that you'll 100% be able to find a job, which also goes back to the fact that there are just less jobs in cybersecurity that are entry level. And that also means that competition is very fierce. You basically have to be the cream of the crop to be able to get into that first job in cybersecurity if you're not starting out in an adjacent role like IT, which is another reason why it's very popular for cybersecurity professionals to first find a job in IT and then eventually kind of make that move into cybersecurity if that's the career path that they're looking to get into. Even if you have a 
cybersecurity bachelor's degree on your resume or cybersecurity bootcamp and your security plus, my recommendation to you would be to get as many technical projects on your resume as possible. Maybe not as many as possible, but more so focusing on the quality of your technical projects. I would have two to three technical projects that you would focus on. I also cover the specific types of cybersecurity projects that you should get onto your resume before you start applying to increase your chances of getting that call back from the recruiter or the hiring manager. This is all covered in my cybersecurity interview prep mastery course, which I recently launched, where I help you prepare for cybersecurity technical and security design interview questions to help you ace your next interview and start your career in cybersecurity. As part of this course, you'll learn cybersecurity interviewing foundations, security analyst mock interviews, access to all my career guides, career roadmaps, as well as other learning resources and templates, and access to 100 plus sample cybersecurity interview questions. This course will share everything you need to help you prepare for your next cybersecurity interviews, and I'm really excited to hear your feedback once you start implementing everything I cover in the course. You can find my cybersecurity interview prep mastery course using the link in my description. All right, so now let's talk about the constant need for upskilling and getting new certifications to be able to continuously grow in your career. While I don't think that this is something that is specifically a problem in the cybersecurity space rather than the tech space overall, I do think that cybersecurity is one of the areas in tech that put the biggest emphasis on requiring and getting certifications. For example, when you're entry level, you may be getting your security plus and then your ISC2 CC certification. And then as you kind of pick a niche in cybersecurity to grow in, whether it be blue team or red team or governance, risk and compliance, AKA GRC, there are plenty of certifications out there for you to get in all of these areas and even more niche certifications in sub niches in these areas, which is also the reason why you see cybersecurity professionals who have 10, 20 years of experience with an entire alphabet behind their name because they have five or six certifications because maybe they needed them to get promoted or get into their new role, or maybe they even made a pivot in cybersecurity and worked in multiple different areas of cybersecurity. I wouldn't say that this is necessarily a requirement or an expectation for every single cybersecurity professional, but I do think it's something to consider when you start getting certifications because more certifications also means more upkeep because for many certifications in cybersecurity, you also need continuing education credits, which means you're always learning, which is technically a good thing depending on how you look at it. Personally, I do think having that requirement of needing to learn something new and having it be a requirement to renewing your CISSP or a different certification that you have under your belt also at the end of the day will make you a better cybersecurity professional and it will better enable you to keep your organizations, your data, and your customers safe. And because you're constantly learning new things and being exposed to different areas as well as up and coming innovations in cybersecurity, there can also be a lot of opportunities for you to be able to get interested in another area of cybersecurity that could also pave the way for a new career path or a new role or a new career opportunity. So at the end of the day, I do think that it means more opportunities for you because you're constantly learning. The main downfall of this is really when it comes to burnout, which is the next thing I want to talk about. But first, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Keeper Security. We have a million devices these days from our VR headsets to our gaming devices, laptops, tablets, and phones. And one of the hardest things can be keeping track of all of our passwords, accounts, and pass keys across all these devices. And this is the reason why I've been a longtime Keeper Password Manager user, which is the most secure, certified, tested, and audited password security platform in the world with full zero trust and zero knowledge security. Plus, not to mention the fact that Keeper Security also supports passkeys, bringing us one step closer to a passwordless feature because Keeper Security now supports passkeys on iPhones, Androids, and using the Keeper browser extension. Passkeys lets you log into apps and accounts the same way you unlock your phone with facial recognition or fingerprint. They're phishing resistant and support two-factor authentication by design. Right now, you can get 50% off Keeper using my code with Sandra or give a test run with a 30-day free trial using the link in my description. Thank you again to Keeper for sponsoring this portion of the video. If you listen to any cybersecurity career talks, burnout is probably one of the most common topics that always comes up when it comes to talking about your career. How do you avoid burnout? How do you maintain work-life balance? How do you deal with alert fatigue? These basically all come down to the same question of how do you keep sane while doing your job continuously that is that is very high performance and keeps you on your toes? If you're on call, then this could be 24 hour on call and basically your brain is always on. You could get a call at 4 a.m. while you're sleeping or even during vacation, which I know many cybersecurity professionals and colleagues who even during vacation or PTO will still get calls from work because of an emergency or a security incident. And that really is just 
the reality of working in cybersecurity, but I also don't want to make it sound all doom and gloom because while it is part of the job, I really do think that it's becoming a more upfront conversation that people are having on a regular basis. For example, the issue of burnout in cybersecurity in general, I think is just becoming more acceptable to talk about. I've seen senior leaders or CISOs talk about this topic and, and it's no longer something that you kind of just gloss over if you really are struggling in the role that you're working in. So I won't sugarcoat the fact that cybersecurity is definitely one of the roles in tech that have the highest rates of burnout. In fact, from this recent article a few months ago, based on a survey, 85% of cybersecurity professionals say that they anticipate leaving their job due to burnout. 24% say that they'll leave cybersecurity entirely forever. And 77% say that their everyday stress affects their ability to keep their customer data secure at work. So burnout is not only a mental health issue, it is also a security issue because of the fact that so many cybersecurity professionals are burned out and that also in turn impacts their performance, whether it comes to dealing with security alerts, security incidents, or even just their everyday tasks that they're working on. And as I've talked about previously on my channel, I've been pretty open with my history with burnout, as well as my experience experience leaving my previous role as an information security analyst. But in my case, I was also working on YouTube along with my full-time job at the same time, which I think really impacted my burnout even more. And which is also why I'm currently taking a sabbatical before I eventually go back to the workforce. And I do think that career breaks and sabbaticals will become more and more common in cybersecurity as more and more companies learn how to deal with burnout in their cybersecurity employees. I know many companies nowadays have also introduced a sabbatical policy where basically if you work at a company for four to five years, there may be a policy in place where you'll get where you'll get a month off for sabbatical leave on top of your existing PTO leave. So that is definitely something that I would take advantage of if your company has that available. And obviously this is a much less intrusive way of taking a sabbatical or a career break rather than just leaving your job because you're still getting that paycheck and you still have that job security and a job that you can come back to after you take your sabbatical and come back feeling recharged and ready to hit the ground running. So with everything we discussed, is a career in cybersecurity really still worth it? Personally, I think my answer is still yes. The biggest reason I think comes down to two things and that is high salaries and job security. So even in the midst of tech layoffs, probably one of the worst tech job markets I've seen in a very long time. I'm sure those of you watching with 10, 20 years of experience in the tech space probably have seen much more than me, but considering the tens of thousands of tech workers who've been laid off in the last few years, this is definitely very significant, but I do think that it hasn't impacted cybersecurity as much as it has in other areas and sectors in technology. Even during a recession, a downturn in the market, a crisis, there's still going to be a need for cybersecurity professionals to protect your data. And I would say even more so, for example, in Imagine a bank or a government consultancy declare that they laid off half of their cybersecurity staff. That, first of all, is already putting a target on your back for nation states, for threat actors and other attackers to be able to target you because they know you have less security defenders. Just based on my personal experience working for a very large finance company and in my last role working at a smaller tech company, the cybersecurity teams that I worked on were rarely impacted or if they were, were very minimally impacted by any layoffs or tech recessions. And I think that cybersecurity roles definitely have more job security than other roles even in tech and in terms of cybersecurity salaries, where in my first role in cybersecurity, I've talked about this before and, and have many videos on starting my career in cybersecurity, but I started my career making $115,000 per year in a cybersecurity analyst rotational program in the New York metro area. Obviously, New York metro has a very expensive high cost of living, but still I think that this was a very high starting salary for someone who was entry level and just getting started in their career. You always have to weigh out the pros and the cons when you're starting a career in any sector, but Personally, if you were to ask me, I do think that cybersecurity is still a very good career option in 2024, even in the midst of all of the changes happening with AI and machine learning, because there are definitely parts of the job as a cybersecurity analyst that AI can replace, but I also don't think that it can 100% replace human intervention in security incidents, in defending an organization, in red teaming. AI learns based off of a model, and even if you ask it to get creative, I don't think that anything will ever replace human ethical hackers, human SOC analysts, human incident responders, and just needing cybersecurity professionals to check the work of AI and doing those constant audits. All right, so hopefully this shared with you all the insights on my end for whether or not it's worth it to start a career in cybersecurity in 2024, as well as me weighing out the pros and the cons. I wanna be as honest with you guys as possible. This career isn't going to be all rainbows and butterflies. 
all the time, but I do still think that the pros outweigh the cons, even when comparing it to other roles in tech. Thank you guys again so much for watching, and if this video was helpful to you, please consider liking and subscribing. Also, I'm trying my best to talk a lot slower in this video. I usually edit my video speed while I'm editing, but I'm naturally a fast talker and it's really hard for me to slow down my talking, but I do think that I try to do that as best as I could and kept that in mind in this video. So hopefully this was helpful. And if this was still too fast, I recommend converting to 0.75x speed on the YouTube player. And I do think that will help a lot as well, but hopefully this was slow enough for everyone to be able to follow along in the video. Thanks again so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!